Hello there, everyone. Today I'm going to show you two Harrows, which are the sales leaders in their respective categories. GTCR and GTCRCR show excellent performance in the preparation of various types of soil and impressive work performance. The GTCR comes in versions of 10 and 12 discs on the simple wheel version and 14 to 30 discs on the double wheel. The GTCCR comes in versions from 16 to 24 discs. Both can perform various types of work, from pasture reform to cane fields, among other operations that the heavy harrowing process requires. To ensure that nothing important is missing from the assembly, I will pass on its main components here. Let's check it out. Frame mount supports the Harrow frames. Front frame supports the front sections of the discs. Rear frame supports the rear section of the discs. Tire pivot axis connects the wheel to the Harrow. Stabilizer bar levels the harrow during transport and assists the operator during coupling. Crossbar joins the harrow to the header. Complete coupling header joins the harrow to the tractor through the crossbar. Tires provide support and displacement to the harrow through the most diverse terrains. Adhesives serve as a warning for maintenance and other purposes. Bolted with discs. Set of discs that will be used on the harrow. Rollers. Support the discs with the aid of nuts, washers, bearings, separators, and shafts. Component box. Unites essential items for the complete assembly of the machine. To facilitate transport and optimize the value of freight, the machines leave the factory disassembled, okay? When receiving your harrow, you need to follow some important steps to get it ready for the first use. First, assemble the disc sections according to the model purchased. Repeat the process for all sections. Then place the front and rear frames on the disc rollers. Then, connect the front and rear frames to the frame uprights. Now it's time to place the articulation axle for the tires, joining the bearings to the uprights of the frames.
Remove the wheel hub nuts and fit the tires. Then replace the nuts. Then place the front and rear wipers and the center wipers. Now let's assemble the header. First place the crossbar. Then place the coupling header through the upper and lower plates. Place the spring bar. Attach the hose support bracket to the header. Attach the stabilizer bar support. Fit the stabilizer bar to the support and pivot axis of the tires. Place the hydraulic cylinder and hydraulic hoses. Remembering that there are models that have only one cylinder, while others come with two. Place the limit rings attached to the hoses, close to the hydraulic cylinder and piston lock. 
fit the Harrow Union pin to the tractor. If necessary, perform the calibration according to the table. Lubricate the points indicated in the Harrow manual. It's ready to go. See how the Harrow arrives and how it should look after you've completed the assembly. Now, let's learn some possibilities of adjustments that this Harrow has. The cutting angle can be adjusted according to the need to increase or decrease the depth of the discs during work. This adjustment is made by opening or closing the front and rear frames, which are on the right side of the harrow. The machine leaves the factory with two limit rings that also assist in the control of working depth. To do this, insert or remove these rings from the hydraulic cylinder as needed. Cross the discs to further increase your work performance. This adjustment is made through the three holes on the left side, both in the front and rear frames. The frame mount must be adjusted so that the coupling header is as level as possible with the drawbar. This adjustment is made in the two coupling holes from the upright to the crossbar. The harrow can be moved to the left or right as needed. This adjustment is generally used when the tractor is wider than the harrow. In this case, position the harrow to the left of the tractor. To do this, use the holes in the header crossbar. Coupling is performed by joining the bar support and the upper header plate using the pin and activating the hydraulic cylinder. During work, remove the pin from the drawbar on the left side of the tractor. Replace this pin during transport. Adjust the stabilizer bar according to the tractor's drawbar so that they are level during transport. To do this, use the holes on the front and rear. The harrow must be fixed to prevent a seesaw effect during transport. Use the stabilizer rod for this purpose. Disc cleaner should be adjusted according to the type and humidity of the soil. For this, use adjustments that allow them to be brought closer or further away from the discs. To find out the approximate hourly yield of your harrow, use the following formula. Here are some important tips to extend the life of the machine. Did you know that you can upgrade your harrow? That's right! Balden staff offers options that can be purchased according to the need. Just take a look. Discs with a diameter of 30, 32 or 34 inches on the GTCR, and 32 or 34 inch discs on the GTCR CR. Discs with a thickness of 9 or 12 millimeters, 
or 7.5 mm for discs 30 inches in diameter. Bearings with oil or grease lubrication, with or without impact protection, or even with an axial seal. Support base, which has the purpose of assisting at the time of coupling, disengaging, as well as supporting the header when the harrow is disengaged. Single or double wheels and several tire options. Always consult a Balden dealer to find out which options best suit your working condition. Your Harrow is unique, so it's important to keep your identification visible for any consultation, okay? The nameplate has model, serial number, manufacturing date, in addition to a QR code, which is scanned with your cell phone. It leads directly to the instruction manual, parts catalog, and also to this video. It's that easy! Oh, and so that no one runs out of information. The GTCR also comes with a printed version of the manual that comes along with your invoice. Until next time, everyone! <laughs>